Hello everyone, Trish Ray. it's me Jenny, it's time for another Not Naked video response to Trish Ray's video series The Naked Truth, where we talk as candidly as truthfully as possible about simply about choosing Straight out the shower, no makeup, uh, today is dry hair, uh, first take, one take, etc etc um, I don't know how many Naked Army vloggers there are left, um, but if anyone does participate, a lot of people choose to do it naked like Trisha um, But I choose not to, um, I choose to wear my jammies because I wouldn't wear them outside and I wouldn't go outside naked either So. Come see, come see. Uh, but either way, it's not a sexy time thing. It's a tool for the vlogger to be vulnerable and honest. And even though my hair is wet, I promise I am straight out of the shower. My neck is a little bit of moisture back here. Um, uh, today it's a non-hair washing day because I've been now that I'm dyeing my hair purple um, since lockdown, just for funsies. Um, I've been trying to wash my hair less, and I was trying to wash my hair less before lockdown anyway. Um, but uh, either way, I, I today is a non-hair washing day, but it is the day that I have time to film. So, yeah, long story short, hi! Um, this week was my suggestion, which is bonkers! Um, and obviously it's the week when I'm, I was working when it was live, haha! <laughs> um, so it was fun to watch out on the VOD, and I suggested Trisha's thoughts on cooking and, uh, you know, the practice she's been getting uh, during lockdown. Um, because she talked about it several times that she's not the most confident cook, um, particularly given that there seems to be a sort of heritage pride to cooking in her family, um, which I, I've never really thought of as a heritage thing, um, uh, but you know, not being particularly confident um, as a cook, um, but having to cook for your family regularly um, and all that jazz. And uh, this is going to sound like a really weird tangent, but uh, Naked Truths are meant to be makeup free, and you may notice that I'm wearing a little bit of makeup because I suck at removing makeup. Um, I've just done a, a cosplay video which will be going up on my stream on my channel later next week, um, and I suck at removing makeup. It is not a skill that I've got, and that reminded me while I was in the shower of years ago there was a Naked Truth on being bad at being a girl. Um, and the more I play D&D, the more that I realise that d and has some wonderful metaphors for life. Um, things like um, focusing on one skill set means you can develop that skill set and trying to spread yourself too thin will be a way of building a weak character. You know, build up your, your master stats. Don't worry about the ones that you can't have. And everyone has a dump stat. Everyone has a dump stat! And it's time to accept that people have dump stats. And my dump stat, like ba Bad Vegan Girl, I suck at removing makeup. I really truly suck. I've used like five wet wipes um, and just got out of the shower and I still have makeup on. I suck at it. Um, and I accept that. And I accept that I suck at it. Um, and I feel like the same thing should happen with cooking to a certain extent. Not everyone is going to be good at everything um, and trying to make yourself good at everything is a recipe for disaster. Now every time you level up, you know, it's good to develop new skills, but you know what? Focus on what's important to you. And if what's important to you is your job and your career and being a mum, then that's, you know, more important than being good at being a cook. Um, because some people are just good at being a cook. Some people are not. Um, for me personally, I am i wouldn't consider myself a good cook. And I think that's also due to lack of XP. Um, so when I was growing up, I I ate school dinners for the entire of my school life. So, you know, we'd have home cooked meal meals every night and like I would help out in the kitchen. But like my mum is from a kind of, um, my mum's mum was a very interesting cook in that like the resounding sense memory of my grandma's house is the smell of burnt bacon <laughs> and fish <laughs> um, and tinned food and uh, dark chocolate and polos and frozen Mars bars and frozen jelly babies and sardines and that that's kind of my residual memory from my my grandma or mum's side well dad's mum like she was the first one who taught us how to put wine in gravy and make proper stocks and do all that stuff so having that as my generational heritage when it comes to cooking um the food that i grew up with was always low salt very low salt which was great and always as low fat as we could have it but it was relatively plain food and i remember going to secondary school and having roast dinners at secondary school and being like why are these roast potatoes so amazing and it's because they added salt and me being like oh, what um and like i'm really proud of my mum and dad for doing healthy cooking but they were also from the mentality of things like cook it like an extra half an hour in the oven for the roast will make it healthier rather than for flavor um and going through primary and secondary school um having school dinners every single day you know i i 
you know, that's one of my meals a day, and then we come home and have a home-cooked meal. Um, and, you know, from various levels of, you know, okay to occasionally really nice. Um, but we didn't do, like, we do chips, we did pigeon chips, like, usually once a week, usually after ballet. Um, but we didn't do a lot of takeaway. Um, like, I think the first couple of times I had ch Chinese takeaway, I was in my late teens. Um, we used to occasionally do, like, um, buy those, like, heat up in the oven takeaway, like, Indians from, like, the supermarket, but we very, I don't remember having takeaway Indian until I was in uni, and we almost never had takeaway pizza. If we had pizza, what we do, like, when I was a kid, is we'd buy the, like, pizza base and then, like, put on the tomato puree and grate the cheese and, like, make our own pizza, or we'd buy a frozen pizza, and that was Thursdays. Thursdays was the day when, um, my mum would work, so, um, we'd go to a babysitter for the afternoon and then it would be pizza night with dad. Um, so, like, that's my residual memory is otherwise having home plain home cooked food um, or school meals. And then when I went into secondary school, into uni, um, I started like when when I do cook at home, I cook for five. You know, it's my turn to cook, so I cook for everyone. So I was used to making. If I made a spaghetti bolognese, I made a spaghetti bolognese for five people. So when I went into uni, that was super useful because I would make a risotto for five, because that's the quantity I'm used to making, and then I portion it up into little Tupperware boxes and I'd just reheat those dishes later on. Um, but after my first year of uni, um, being that I wasn't making the nicest food and then I was reheating it or getting it out of the freezer and people were ordering pizza and all that jazz, um, when I got into my second year of uni I suddenly discovered that there was a Chinese right down the road and so I'd have Chinese at least once a week. Um, and I'd, uh, we had a co-op down the road, so I found myself, like, really nice co-op ready meals, um, and I got kind of into that kind of rotation. Um, so I never really learned to get good at cooking. Like, my housemate used to make beautiful vegetarian food every day, and it was gorgeous. Um, and I, there I was with my, like, I uh, kind of made some potato wedges, and, like, learning how to make food in uni, I, I wasn't good, like, I, I've never been a good cook, but, like, I just kind of immediately, the moment I had the opportunity, I would just buy food. Um, and the other thing was, like, because at uni particularly, I wasn't, like, a wild, crazy party person, or, like, I'm free and clear, let's buy all these clothes. No, I was a super cheapskate, and I was super antisocial, particularly my second year of uni, I was completely and utterly shut down to the world. So I never worried about money in terms of food. So I'd go out and I'd buy myself garlic bread or a homemade, a ready meal from co-op or like a fancy salad from co-op. Um, because, or a sandwich from co-op even, because I wasn't spending money on anything else, so I could spend money on food. And then, since I finished uni, I've been in employment, both my first main job and my second job that I'm in currently. They provide me with food. Um, so that's 40 hours a week. No, more than that, 50 hours a week at least, and like 60 and 70 hours um, during the summer if um, conference season is on. Um, uh, I eat at work, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I have two meals a day at work. Um, so I very rarely eat at home. Um, so when I, last year when I was living uh, in my flat and I was catering for myself, again, my housemate, amazing cook, like the, the rule we had with my old housemates. I did the cleaning, she did the cooking. Um, so whenever we had like a meal together, she did the cooking, she would make beautiful things, or I would go to the local co-op and buy food. Um, and like I'm, I'm okay at a couple of dishes, like I can make some nice noodle dishes, like um, when I was in uh, Canada with my friend Tor, she showed me how to make noodle soup, and so I make occasional noodle soups, not to the same level as she does, um, but like I occasionally make noodle soups and like but, like, I will have probably takeaway once a week because I'm so, so frugal in other things. Um, or I'll have, like, cereal for a meal. Or, like, I'm just not frugal. Like, I'm not... I don't think I'm a bad cook if I follow the recipes. But if I take even a second to, like, improvise, it usually ends in, like, a... It's alright. It's edible. <laughs> um, and I think I've been kind of spoiled by working in um, my last two jobs where foods food is prepared because it just doesn't challenge me. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's just one of those skills I haven't got enough XP in to level up. Um, I don't think I'm bad, but I think if I were to have to cook every single day for people, then I'd probably get better at cooking. And there's certain things that like I'm never being good at. Like I'm never being good at making roast potatoes. I can make great potato wedges. Roast potatoes, which is one of my favourite things, I suck at. Um, and like, I've never been good at like making like tender chicken. Like, if I buy like chicken breast or whatever, it's always like 
it's okay, but I, like, you know when you buy chicken, it's like tender and meaty and lovely, I'm just not very good at that. I love making salads. I'm great at making salads for myself. I don't know whether or not other people share my opinion, but like lettuce and peppers and tomatoes and olives um, and a little bit of onion um, and with some olive oil and balsamic and salt and tuna. Um, tuna's optional. Uh, but like, I love making myself, uh, like if, if I'm cooking for myself, what I will do is I go to the supermarket and I'll buy myself loads of salad. And I'll have salad for a meal like two or three days of the week and I love that. Um, I almost never eat bread. Um, that's just something that like I realised I just don't do. Um, particularly when I was living uh, out last year, um, I just didn't. And then during lockdown, um, because I've been living with my parents for the last um, year or so back, back home, um, during lockdown it was sandwiches, sandwiches every day. And I'm okay at making sandwiches, I'm okay to have a sandwich meal once a day. Um, but I just like if if I wasn't living at home and being strict to the meal plan that we have so we're you know trying to not go to the supermarket as often as possible and all that jazz I I would go and buy my food every single day and that's horrible because I don't like buying packaging packaging is so bad for the environment but I'm also so lazy and like <laughs> it was very interesting I had a work training and um, one of the conversations they came up with was you know I feel like most people home cook their meals nowadays and most people don't like buy ready meals from the supermarket and I was like I work 60 hours a week during conference time having two to three meals at work a day so on my days off I don't cook I don't cook I buy food like I will have fish and chips if I can maybe once a week and then maybe I'll have myself treat food and then during lockdown again sandwiches sandwiches for lunch five days a week, I don't have breakfast, and then there'll maybe be something for dinner that's a bit more fancy, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I just don't have enough experience to know if I'm okay. Um, and like, yeah, I feel like if I follow recipes I can do okay, but I'm just not, I just, I, I, I haven't had the need to learn, so it's not a skill I've developed. And I wish I could say I've developed other skills to make my character a bit more balanced, but nope, nope, I just, I'm just lazy. I'm terribly, horribly lazy. Um, and has this naked truth been so long? Yes, it's been so long. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you, Trisha, for doing my subject. Um, it was just one of the things that you were saying that you you um you're not a confident chef, but you're doing it, and I thought it'd be a fun light subject because the world is on fire. <laughs> the world is on fire. Um, the the people who are getting through it the best have resigned themselves to just doing what they can. Um, so I wish you health and happiness um, for what's going on at the moment um, and people to select nice bright subjects and uh, I'm interested to see what happens with The Naked Truth or Dragon Rider Hangouts as they go. Um, whatever you feel confident with is important um, and hopefully there'll be some rain to put out this fire sometime soon. Sometime soon there'll be some rain to put out this fire. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, just got to keep cracking on with what we do and uh, maybe I'll learn some more skills. I don't know what skills, it probably won't be in the kitchen, but there we go. Thank you all for hanging out. I'm sorry this video has been ridiculously long, um, but yeah, I will see you guys all when I do for another Naked Truth. Um, and thank you Trisha and her community for just being awesome, just so awesome and like a light in this, in this time uh, is the Dragon Riders community. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all when I do. Bye for now.